Welcome back to the business.com tip and trick day. And it's a really good one today. It's one that I'm sure has come to the mind of many people out there, medical suspensions. We've already covered what to do in the event of having to send an employee home due to medical reasons. But this new term seems to have a few people stumped. So what on earth is it? A medical suspension can only arise under relevant health and safety legislation. This comprises of the Ionising Radiation Regulations, 1999, what a mouthful, Control of Lead at Work Regulations, 2002, and Control of Substances, Hazardous to Health Regulations, 2002, what memory. They all require routine health surveillance. This is when the employer looks out for signs of work-related ill health in staff exposed to these risks. If this reveals that an employee's continued exposure to hazardous substances risks damage to their health, the employer must immediately remove them from the work they are doing. However, a medical suspension can only be authorised by a doctor appointed by the health and safety executive. Once you've been advised to place an employee on medical suspension, you must pay for them normally for up to 26 weeks. It's worth noting that this is full pay and not sick pay. There are a few extra points here as well to remember. You don't have to pay an employee if you've offered them any suitable alternative work for the duration of their medical suspension and they've refused it. The employee can't return to their usual role until the medical inspector confirms that it's safe for them to do so. It's not your decision. If they're unhappy with the decision to suspend, they can ask the relevant authorities to review it. This applies to very few companies across the country, but it is a valuable piece of information if your employees work with hazardous items. And it's our top tip for today. More to come from thebusiness.com. See you soon.